Chapter 6. For some people, you don't have to do anything. Just knowing they're in your life is comforting enough. The alarm makes the sleeping bigger boy groan in frustration and shift his body. Feeling guilty, the clock owner reaches out to turn it off. It's the weekend. He shouldn't have forgotten to turn off the alarm clock. He never wakes up later than usual anyways. Even so, the sleepy head cake is still not awake. See you would have gotten out of bed if it were before. When he sees the sleeping boy's face, he gets drowsy. Seal lies back down, snuggles up against Cake's chest, and pulls the blanket over his shoulder as he gets cold easily, but he loves his AC temperature super low. After a long while, Seal gets hungry and starts moving. He keeps shifting until the sleeping boy flutters his eyes open. Why are you squirming? Cake asks in a hoarse voice, frowning in grogginess. I'm hungry. The sleepy head drops his eyes, looking annoyed like usual when he wakes up. What time is it? About 8.30. Then I sleep until 10. But we're going to the theater today. Can we go at noon or in the afternoon? Cake says, closing his eyes. Seal pouts. Why is he so sleepy? He refuses to go to bed at night or wake up in the daytime. What an odd lifestyle. I'll get up first. I'm hungry. Mm. Take this off. It's heavy. Seal hits the arm on his body. The weight is everything but light. Cake laughs with his eyes closed. He lifts his arm and flips to the other side. Seal then gets up, leaving him sleeping in alone. Having breakfast, good boy? Hearing the familiar voice, Seal pauses and diverts his attention from his plate. Yabao! He smiles when he finds his brother standing behind. Why are you having breakfast at this time? Long Pao asks, pulling a chair beside his brother to sit on. Get up late? Yeah, I woke up and fell asleep again. I got down here at nine. Seal says, putting his spoon and fork together. You crash at your friends? Yeah, I'm busy these days. I'm here to get some things. I'll stay over at my friends tonight. The elder brother smiles when his younger sibling pouts. Don't be mad. I'll be back and stay with you for a long time after I submit my work. Seal nods. He slightly dips his chin as his brother sto sto strokes his head. Did you see Cream? She asked about you the other day. I'll say hi to her on my way out. Long Pao says. What's your plan today? I'm waiting for Cake to wake up. We're watching a movie together at the mall. Long Pao raises his eyebrows, surprised. His little brother is a homebody, barely going out. You'll take a bus? Yes. Be careful. Long Pao isn't worried if Cake goes with him. Yes, Seo promises. He looks at his brother, smiling at him, and smiles back. I'll wake Cake up. Cake stayed over? Yeah, still sleeping like a log. The elder brother laughs. Go ahead, I'll get my stuff and visit Cream for a bit. Seo nods. He tilts his head to receive a kiss on the cheek from his brother before transferring his plate to the sink. He then ascends the stairs to the second floor. Seo opens the door to see the sleepy head still sound asleep. He sprawls comfortably, taking up half the space. The room owner stands next to the bed and jumps on top of the other, startling him awake. Cake looks at him with his eyes widening in confusion from the sudden wake up. Ew. Cake seems relieved. I was startled. You wouldn't get up. You threw your whole body. I could have puked. See you purses his lips. Sleepy head. What time is it? Almost 11. The small boy answers. Aren't you hungry? Sleeping is a big deal. Good. 
I'll tell Mama you don't want breakfast. See you, Smiles. She made chicken rice. I want it, the sleepy head says after hearing his favorite menu. I'll get up now. Be quick, I'll dress up in the meantime. Okay, I eat fast. I'm not going after 12. I'll run through the water and call it done. Cake laughs, ruffling the hair of the boy on top of him, making it messy. Seo cries out, springs up, and tells the person who just got up to shower and have breakfast immediately. Here you go. The movie starts in 10 minutes. Cake says with a smile after coming back with two tickets. Good thing there was showtime available when we got here. Seo nods. Ia Bao gave me some money. He said we could buy popcorn with it. Oh, mom gave me some as well, Cake says, showing a hundred bad bank note from his pocket. An extra hundred besides the ticket fees. I'm proud gave you a lot. The smaller boy's eyes widen. So kind. The bigger boy laughs and nods. Cake leads CEO inside and points at the restroom. Go to the restroom first. I'll buy popcorn. The sweet flavor, right? Yeah. Cake actually doesn't need to ask because they already know. Sweet flavored popcorn is their must-have snack when they watch movies in the theater. Since they don't do this often, it's a good memory that happens once in a while. You need to have popcorn at the theater. Something like that. Wait here after you're done. Don't wander off. Cake says in all seriousness, Seo has no sense of direction. He can't stroll alone as he will forget every turn and walk around aimlessly. It's hard to find him once he gets lost. Okay, don't take long, okay? Yeah, I'll be right back. With that, Seo nods and turns around to follow the path with the restroom sign. When he's back, he sees his neighbor waiting with popcorn. The bigger boy smiles and feeds CEO a piece of popcorn when he joins him with his mouth open. Mmm, yummy. CEO chews, closing his eyes. More. Let's eat in the theater, Cake says, tapping CEO's forehead. Walk well, quickly then, I want to eat popcorn. The long-legged boy turns to his slow neighbor who has the nerve to rush him. If he went faster, the other wouldn't be able to catch up. Cake looks down at the popcorn in the paper cup and turns his gaze to the boy who has stopped eating since the first since the movie started. He forgets everything when he concentrates on something and eats very slowly. He hasn't finished half of it even after some time because he takes a bite one by one like a kid. On the contrary, Cake takes handful bites. With that thought, Cake puts a piece of popcorn onto the mouth of the boy staring at the screen without blinking. Seo opens his mouth and chews. Is he aware Cake is feeding him? His focus is no joke. Regardless, his eyes that grow big when he's interested in something and his cheeks that move when he munches look adorable. Compared to his body, Seo's cheeks are fluff fluffy as he's always been a thin boy. Unlike Seo, Cake was all plump when he was a baby. But since he was an adventurous, active kid that played all kinds of sports, he had a growth spurt in middle school, suddenly getting taller and in shape with muscles. Meanwhile, Seo stayed home most of the time and didn't play outside like other boys his age. He has been small and never changed. While getting lost in the past, he jumps because he forgets to pull his hand back. The boy watching the animation bites his fingers, thinking he's holding popcorn. Mm, what are you doing? See you whispers. Why did you fool me? Cake didn't. Why did you bite my fingers? He asks and wipes his fingers on CEO's shirt, acting like he's trying to get off the saliva. The smaller boy grumbles and turns its, his attention to the screen. Cake smiles to himself and takes a handful of popcorn while feeding CEO at the same time. Is it good? Cake asks as they exit the theater. It's good, 
but sad. Sio answers softly, still gloomy since the movie ended. He lingered inside for some time before getting up as if he could change the story if he sat there longer. Yeah, it's really sad. The sequel is darker. Sio, in fact, doesn't like watching movies, especially book-to-film film adaptations. When he reads, he has images in his mind, and when he watches the adaptations, most of the time, they're not similar to his imagination. They're not visualized as well as in his mind. But Cake loves movies. He can never read through hundreds or thousands of pages. However, Siu doesn't mind accompanying him to the cinema because Cake never leaves him while he reads. You teared up, Eel. Yeah, I didn't want him to die. I felt bad. Cake laughs and ruffles Siu's hair. Let's go home. The smaller boy brushes the hand on his head off and pouts. My hair is messy now. Where are you going? The question stops Siu. He turns back. To the exit. That's the parking lot. Cake laughs. You're lost again. We're supposed to turn right. No, it's the opposite direction. We have to go down the elevator over there. With that argument, the confident boy gets reluctant. He looks back and forth in confusion. The, the shops look the same. He remembers it's on the right. Don't make that stubborn face. You're always lost. Cake says. Come on. Seal locks his eyes on the back of the boy leading the way. Cake is always reliable. He's not scared to do anything, as if he can handle any situation, no matter how serious they are, unlike him. He isn't confident enough to do anything alone. Siu licks the cola popsicles he broke in half and shared with Cake on the swing in the garden near their places, with Cake pushing the swing for him. The breeze on his body feels so great that he can't help but smile. The weather is relaxing in the evening. Birds are chirping. The kids from the other alleys are playing tags. A dog leaps forward to get the tiny ball. No one bothers them. Being with Cake alone in this familiar place makes Seal be himself. Have you packed, Eel? Seal turns his head as the swing falls toward the pusher. I've started. He flies back up a second later. How fast? I haven't. Mama helped me two days ago. I'm too lazy, Cake says. Mom reminds me to do it every day. Just get started then, Sio says, taking the last bite. I'll help. We're leaving on Wednesday. I lost the packing list. The smaller boy sighs. He knew it. I got mine. How exciting. We're going to scout camp. His voice is excited as it sounds, but Sio doesn't feel that way in the slightest. He hates scout camp. He just dislikes every activity requiring staying over at other places. He doesn't like going out of town, participating in activities, and sleeping with others. It's no fun. I don't want to go. You say that every year. I don't want to go every year. Kay claps. We're in the same class this year. It's great. Yeah. Seal mumbles, though he thinks otherwise. Once home, Cake and Seal are called, called to get seated at the dining table. The two boys' eyes simultaneously widen when they are presented with two small flip phones, one black and one white, on the table. They look up at their mothers. Is this for me, Mama? Is this for me, Mom? Frau Prapa beams, seeing her son barely containing his happiness. Yes, dear. We think you're big boys now. I talked to Prao and decided to buy your phone so we can contact each other anytime. Nitnaba slightly lowers her head and says, But you can't use it during classes. Use it properly. You have to save up to add credit yourself so you won't be extravagant. And... Take care of them well, Prow says softly. Compared to Aunt Prow, Sio thinks his mama is stricter and scarier. Thank you, mama. The smaller boy thanks his mama and hums in contentment. 
he takes the white phone and flips it open to check it out. Cake also grabs the other one. He types on the keypad for a moment before grinning and looking up. Thanks, Mom. The mother smile, watching their middle school kids beaming at their first phones. They can't imagine how obsessed these boys will be. Hopefully, the boys won't use them to the point it affects their studies. The mothers aren't worried about Ski Eo. The other boy is more concerning. Ski Eo is happy his mama bought him a phone because having one of his own makes him feel more like a grown-up. He doesn't really know what to do with it, though. There's no one he wants to call. If he wants to chat with Cake, he can simply walk to his place. If he misses Cake, he can stay over at his house. They see each other nearly all day, so CEO doesn't need to rely on this small communication device. On the other hand, Cake seems particularly in a good mood. Are you so happy? CEO asks as he follows Cake upstairs to his room. Yes, aren't you? I am, but I don't know whom to call. You can call or text your friends. I don't have the friends I want to call or text. Not even girls? Sio shakes his head. You're enough for me. Cake laughs and nods casually. It's perhaps because Sio says this often, so often that the listener can't grasp the meaning it holds. Playing a game? Sio asks when the room owner goes to his computer as soon as they're here. No, MSN. Again? He's been obsessed with this program. Sio sighs, puffs his cheeks, and plops on the bed. I promise to text Rin at 6. Rin again. Rin, 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 Rin. Rin this, Rin that. Sio is sick of this name. Cake. Hmm? I want to play checkers. The boy typing down his email address halts and turns his head. Now? Yeah, I want to. But I promised her. She won't see me when she's active. Siu presses his lips together. Cake usually never rejected him. Is it because the girl is more important or Siu isn't important enough? Whatever the reason, Cake doesn't choose him. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe in a couple of hours? Yeah. Siu nods, looking at Cake's smile. He smiles back. Cake turns to his computer, leaving CEO alone. This is the first time CEO feels lonely, even if Cake is here with him. CEO frowns as he watches the other boy scrape the foil from the prepaid refill card he bought from the convenience store on their way home. CEO has no idea why he's topping it up again. What did he spend on? CEO topped it up for 20 baht and it hasn't been used. It might expire before he uses it up. Meanwhile, Cake's credit is gone really quickly. He seemingly will buy refill cards, refill cards, more often than snacks from now on. Cake! The boy typing the 16-digit 16 digit, 16 number on his phone lifts his eyebrows and replies, Hmm? You just topped it up the other day. I used it up. Why so fast? I sent a lot of messages says the bigger boy, smiling sheepishly. I just bought the promotion of free calls after 10. You're on the phone so often. Just a little. See you presses his lips together. It's not as little as, as he has claimed. These days, Cake left CEO to go to bed first and chatted with someone on the balcony. He came back inside after about an hour full of mosquito bites. That's why CEO doesn't stay over at his place lately. Cake probably wants some privacy. When will your friend arrive? Siu brings up when Cake told him on the bus that a friend would stay over at his place. They will leave for scout camp early in the morning, and this friend is afraid he won't get up in time as his house is far. They said he would get his stuff and come here after dinner. In a minute, I guess. His parents will drop him off? Yeah. Cake nods in France. My inbox is full again, he grumbles, typing away. Delete some, Sio suggests. 
When he receives promotional messages or unnecessary notifications, he deletes them. I don't want to. I want to keep them. The bigger boy sighs. Rin's messages are all cute. Which ones should I delete? Seo sighs as he watches the other boy mumble to himself. He doesn't like this. He doesn't like this at all. Cake. Hmm? You have to pack up today. We're leaving tomorrow. He keeps procrastinating and barely has time left. Uh-huh. Cake answers with more than half of his attention on the phone. You've been putting it off for days. I'm proud told me to force you to do it. Mm-hmm. The smaller boy knits his brow. Cake! Cake jumps and turns to see you in shock. What? Why did you sa shout? You put all your attention on your phone and gave me meaningless answers. If you don't care about me, I'll go home. At this moment, the boy who has told himself to be patient loses it. He hates it when Cake ignores him like this. Since when did he become unimportant? Okay, okay, I'm putting my phone away. Kay quickly gets up and walks to see you, seeing him so frustrated that he's kicking a fuss. So, should I pack now? Oh, don't be mad. I'm not mad. You're scowling. The irritated boy sighs. I'll go home to take a shower and come back to help. You can shower here. No, you take a shower. I can use my mom's bathroom. It's okay. Siu says levelly, getting up from the bed. He's about to leave, but Kate grabs his wrist. What? You're upset. I'm not. Go take a shower. I told you to do it here, but you wouldn't. You're upset. Kate says, po poking Siu's cheek. You're sulking with puffing cheeks. Hmm, don't poke it. Siu turns away. Don't be upset. I'm not. I'm just going to take a shower and return to help you pack up. You sure? Yes. Okay, come back quickly after you're done. Sio nods. He glances at Cake's phone when it vibrates continuously, and its owner also turns his attention to it. I'm leaving. Uh, okay. Cake gives him a smile. See you in a bit. The smaller boy agrees and spins out of the room. He turns around one last time and sees Cake typing on his phone. Seal heaves a sigh when the door is shut, feeling indescribably hollow. All he knows is he hates this feeling the most, the feeling of being afraid of something, but he doesn't know what it is. Four tees and pants each, four pairs of socks, two towels. We're wearing the scout uniforms tomorrow. What else? Seal takes each thing he says from the closet, lays them down, and stops to think. He checks the packing list on a piece of paper handed out by his teacher last week. Oh, the flashlight. Cake, do you have a flashlight? He asks the boy who has connected the square gray PS on the, to the small screen. Cake and his friend are lying on their stomachs over pillows with game consoles in their hands. A flashlight? In the third drawer, I guess. Knowing the location, Seal pulls out the drawer to get what he's looking for. It's not here. Is something covering it? Cake says, his eyes on the screen, his fingers moving fast. Oh, are you cheating? Tar yells. He unleashed full power. Why did he lose? I pressed the button so hard. The console was about to break. Cheating my ass. It was all skills. Cake says, wiggling his brows cheekily. Change the character. Here, we can change, exchange our consoles. See, you still can find the flashlight. Cake, I can't find it. I'll help you find it in a sec. Find it yourself then. I'll fold the clothes. Okay. See, you shakes his head. He was only going to give Cake a hand, not do all the work like this. As it turned out, Siu had to even bring the backpack out of the closet because Cake was busy playing the game.
A while later, Seal has folded the clothes and put the mini shower cream and shampoo bo bottles and Prowl prepared into the backpack. But those two are still playing the game without a break. Jake, there are only a flashlight and water dipper left. And Prowl said they were in your room. Only two things. I'll take care of them. The game addict says without meeting Seal's eyes. I'm leaving now. I'm sleepy. Oh no, it's late. Sleep here. Tara's here with you. I'll sleep on this mattress. Tara shoots. Right, sleep here. Your mama probably locked the door, thinking you'd stay over. But... No buts. Kay cuts in. I'm not letting you leave. Stay here. You can turn off the light. I'll turn on the lamp and play the game quietly. I'm going to bed then. Yeah. Good night, you. Good night, see you. Tar echoes. Good night, both of you. See you replies. He turns on the lamp for them, switches off the light, and returns to the bed. He lies down, rolls around, covers his shoulder with a blanket, and closes his eyes. An hour later, the two boys playing the game feel their eyelids getting heavy. Star stretches when the last round is over. Let's call it a day and go to sleep. Yeah, let's do that. I'm sleepy. He will nag at me if I don't uh, get up tomorrow. Cake says, getting up to put away the consoles and turn off the PS. Tar sits up and organizes the pillow and blanket. He glances at CEO who faces his direction with his eyes closed. You guys are really close, huh? Hmm? You and Eel. Of course, we've been together since we were born. Tar nods, a smile on his lips. He takes freaking good care of you. Likewise, his friend, his friend takes good care of CEO. Yeah, Eel is cute. Tar nods in agreement. It's nice having a friend as your neighbor. Laughing, Cake puts away his things and sits on the bed. He throws a quick glance at CEO and turns his gaze to his best friend. Nothing can replace either of us. We're friends and brothers. It's like we're the other half of each other. Yeah, Tar smiles. I believe you. Turn off the lamp. Okay, good night. Yeah, good night. Cake replies and lies down. He opens his arms when the sleeping boy snuggles up against him as he feels the warmth from his body. Cake strokes CEO's hair and drapes his arm around him. Tar lifts his eyebrows at the sight and blinks at their sleeping postures. He has no sleep siblings or neighbors he's close to since birth, but he doubts them cuddling is normal. Right? End of chapter 6